So in this section, we're gonna be talking about the S3 API upload part. Um, so as a prerequisite for this, as we kind of see in this documentation down here, um, you must initiate a multi-part upload using the create multi-part upload before you can use the upload part API. And how this all fits together is that using this API, you kind of um, tell AWS or you tell S3 that you're gonna be creating a file that's gonna have a, a few parts in it. And then in the upload part is when we actually upload the data. Uh, so when you call this API, you get a key back or an ID, and you need to use that when you're using the upload part API to indicate to S3 that all the parts that you're uploading uh, in the particular request are with reference to a particular S3 file. Uh, so this is great for concurrency to chunk out your data into smaller bits. Uh, it's also great for fault tolerance in case you have some uh, transient internet connection issues or connection issues during your upload. Um, it makes it easier to recover and just uploads the bits that failed as opposed to the entire object. So if we take a look at this documentation here, uh, there's a bunch of important bits. Uh, the most, uh, not the most, but one of the more important ones is that the part numbers can be anything between one and 10,000. So you can chunk your data into 10,000 pieces at most. Um, and a part number uniquely identifies, yada, yada, yada. Um, each part must be at least five megabytes. So that's your, your floor. And I don't think there's a ceiling. If there is, it's probably some ridiculously high number. Um, the other important bit is that uh, this section down here to ensure that your data hasn't been corrupted over the wire or some kind of data loss or serialized and deserialization problem. Uh, so it says here to ensure that data is not corrupted when traversing the network, you can specify the MD5 header. Uh, and this is just gonna be a hash that you run on uh, data that you know is validated prior to sending it and then Amazon or S3 rather is gonna do the opposite operation or compare that hash with the, the hashed content of the file and to make that makes sure that the data hasn't been corrupted over the wire. Um, so that's just kind of a verification step to make sure your data uh, is basically good to go in S3 before you finish your operation. Um, so let's check how this looks in the um, AWS SDK using Node.js. Um, so what are we seeing here? So we're seeing uh, params, which we pass in the body. Let's, do we still have this? No, I don't have this copy pasted still. But basically you need to convert your, um, your file, whatever it is, or your section of the file into a binary string. And you do that in Node.js using the file system or FS package. Uh, so go and check that out. So you can probably find a lot of examples of that um, online. So you specify the chunk that you want to chunk it into. Uh, you specify the bucket, the file name, the part number. Again, this needs to be between one and 10,000. And then the upload ID, which is the key that corresponds to um, like a sequence of upload part events. So again, you get this key by calling the create multi-part upload API and you use it in every subsequent, subsequent request to S3 when you're using the upload part API. Uh, so we see here, we pass in those parameters. We have a callback function for error and data, just logging stuff out in either case. And then we see that when we're done, um, we just get a data response back, just uh, some metadata about the request. Um, so this was the second of three steps with regards to multi-part uploads. The final one is the complete upload or the complete multi-part upload API, which signifies that, hey, you're done. Uh, the multi-part upload is now complete. Um, so I'm gonna talk about that in my next video.